Hey everyone, this is Grace of GB Maltese, and I hope you are doing finer than frogs hair. I thought I'd do a little whipping chat today. Uh, last week, um, we were in the midst of Hurricane Barrel, and I thought I'd tell you a little bit about how much fun that was. Yes, um, this is the one I am working on. I haven't done a whole lot on it. Um, last week I didn't get much of anything done at all, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. I am, um, this, you can find this, diamond painting, um, on, at capturedbyradiance.com. The name of this one is, <laughs> let me see, I don't remember. Um, Enchanting Edge is the name of it, and it is a 50 by 64 centimeter. Okay, so I've got some done since I was doing this last. Lots of hand problems and things <laughs> going on for the last, ooh, quite some time. Uh, I'm taking some medicine with... To, to, to help with joints and it seems to be helping some it's not perfect and I need to get my hand in good condition to do some crochet for a baby blanket for my sweet Isaac's baby that's coming Isaac is basically my adopted grandson I taught him English when he first moved here I was I taught I took for 34 years and then now retired. So we became very close. Uh, he lost his mom during the time I knew him. And yeah, I, he, that, he's been through a lot in his life. But he went to, into the Marines, was there in there for four years. He just got out. He's been married now for over a year and now they're expecting a baby in October so he was in California now he's back in Texas and his wife is from California <laughs> after this hurricane she now decided she did not like Texas too much <laughs> poor thing she um, yeah, she got to experience some of the worst weather we've had in a long time. Between all the rain that we got in May. And then this hurricane. It, yeah, it, it, it had been a real great welcome for her. But they are doing good. So let me tell you about me and my little town as we... Uh, had Hurricane Barrel come through, and and it's Barrel, B-E-R-Y-L, like the mineral, I guess, or stone, whatever, whichever thing that is. Anyway, it was, had gone through Mexico, then it came back into the Gulf, and it kept moving around, and they weren't sure exactly where it was going to hit. We weren't sure if we were going to get anything here in Texas and then the next thing we know yeah the eye is centered right over Houston and came straight up over us that was lovely yeah we're about 70 miles northeast of Houston and it was crazy it uh, my sister lives in Sugarland, which is a little south of Houston. Went right over her. Her the eye went right over her. She lost part of a fence, and it, it was wild, just wild ride for them. Then it came up here. I can only tell you what happened here because I lived through it <laughs> down here, up here rather. It was so windy. I saw the trees just sometimes I could hear the wind whistling through the windows and yeah that made my husband go into work that day he works about 25 miles north 
about 22, something like 22, 25 miles north of our town. So when he left work, we weren't really getting too much. It hadn't come far enough on shore for us to start getting the effects. So, yeah, he's telling him, you know, it's supposed to get bad and it's supposed to be a lot of wind. Uh, are we going to open? Oh, yeah, man. They, uh, they never shut. I'm telling you, they never close. He is a service manager at a auto dealership. And um, he, do, he has to do a lot of working on the cars because they don't know what they're doing. Jerry is a master technician, auto technician in everything. He's taken the test for every engine. So, yeah, he ends up doing a whole lot of that work, too. So, yeah, he got to go in. So, I sat here with my pups, and let's, I guess maybe two, three hours, I'm telling you, the wind started coming. It was blowing the trees. We live in the big thicket area of Texas East. We live in the um, pine forest of East Texas. So yeah, we have lots of pine trees. We have other types of trees, but mostly pine trees. And the trees were just swaying back and forth. Luckily, we don't have any that are right on top of us that will fall on the house. Jerry's tried to keep those under control so they won't fall on us. One tree in the back, did we did lose an oak tree. Another oak tree. We lost one Back in May when we had all the rain and we had wind then also. But from all of the rain that we had, the ground was still pretty soaked. So all of that wind, those trees were ready to just go at any time. And some of them did. Yeah, we had a bunch falling on electric lines. So, yeah, we lost electricity, of course, on Monday. Uh, I lost it the first time from about 11 o'clock till 12. So we had it on for about an hour. I'm thinking, oh, wow, well, this is, you know, we're going to be okay. Uh, then it went off at 1 o'clock on Monday. And it stayed off. Well, we don't have a generator. So I um, was sitting in the dark. You know, you don't want to use your flashlights up and that kind of thing. And... Um, so mostly was sitting in the dark and I had, I had a book light and I had batteries that I put in that so I could turn it on and read a little bit because I had quite a few batteries. Of course, the food in the refrigerator and freezer, I started worrying. I'm like, okay, surely it'll be back on tonight or in the morning. Nope. Nope. We finally got it back on Wednesday evening. I'm guessing around maybe 5 o'clock, between 5 and 6. Yeah, so we lost everything in the refrigerator and the freezer. It all thought out, and I'm not taking chances on refreezing that. And, you know, so any kind of things that would spoil had to be thrown out which was pretty much everything. I had some frozen fruit in there, and I thought, well, I'm gonna, I haven't tried it yet. It, it's refrozen, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe it'll be okay. I'm going to try it and see. Y'all tell me what you think, because I'm thinking that it's just plain fruit. There's no sugar, nothing added to it. So I thought, I'm going to keep that. It's just uh, maybe three bags of some fruit. Everything else... In the garbage so yeah we're talking hundreds of dollars thrown away and we did that when no wait we did that Thursday night no we didn't we did it Wednesday night yeah we finally finished about midnight throwing putting food into a we had I think five 
large garbage sacks, like the 33 gallon sacks, full of food. For Jerry was going to throw all of that out the next day. He's going to take it up to work. Because, yeah, all this time, they're still having to go into work. And I'm sitting at home in the dark, in the heat, because the day of the hurricane, it went bad. It, it was cool enough. Uh, when the th biggest threat went over, you could open the windows and you were getting some fresh air because the wind was still blowing some. It was nice. The next day, oh, mm -mm. it was so humid and hot. You closed the windows because there was no wind blowing. And if it had been, it had just been hot, humid air. So, just, you know... Try to make it uh, the night before like I said it was cool and I we were able to sleep with no problem Tuesday night <laughs> I took cushions off of the couch and laid them right in front of some windows that are kind of low to the ground right up next to the window <laughs> it was a long time before I finally dozed off because it, it's there was no air, no air. You're just going. Oh, please blow, please blow. Where's the wind now when you need it? Nothing. So I didn't get too much sleep that night. I was mostly reading my book because <laughs> I couldn't take the heat. By early in the morning. I think we got down to 72 degrees that night. Well, actually like around um, 6 o'clock in the morning is, is the coolest part of the night. So it was down to 72 degrees. But then guess what it did during the day? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Yeah. It went right on back up. And my daughter, she's at her place and she has no electricity. Oh, and another thing. Phones weren't working. You couldn't text anyone. Mine did that for two or three days. Um, two days, completely nothing. On Wednesday, occasionally it would work. And you could text someone to let them know you were okay. And sometimes you couldn't. By Thursday, it, it, it was much better. And when, like I said, Wednesday evening, we finally got electricity on. Let me tell you something. When that electricity came on, I'm like, hallelujah, praise God. It was so hot. And you don't really realize just how much you depend on that electricity until you lose it. It just, oh, it was heavenly. So, like I said, then that night, after we cooled off a little bit, yeah, we had to start throwing stuff away before it froze back up and it stuck to the, you know, the freezer because it leaked. So, yeah, we had to clean all the leaks, the foods that <clears throat> leaked out into the freezer. It was just lovely. It was lovely. Just a lovely way to spend the evening. But... I'm so happy to have electricity back on. Also on Wednesday, of course, my husband had to go to work and he didn't they didn't have electricity at work, but they did have a big generator. And can you believe this? <clears throat> on the day of the hurricane, there were people going in to have their cars looked at and worked on. I'm just like, why? Why? And they came Tuesday and Wednesday. I don't think, Jerry, I don't think they got electricity till Friday, maybe, where he works. But yeah, he's still having to go. And they didn't have water. So, yeah, it's not pleasant. Thank the Lord. We did not lose our water. Oh, I was so, because I took cold showers. That did help save me a little bit. I remember getting in that shower, turning the, because all there is is cold water, of course. 
course you don't want any heat at that time but when I first stepped in there and turned my back I just had it running just a little bit so I wouldn't get the full impact right away it felt like needles sticking in my back to start with until I finally got used to it once I got used to it I turned it on up and I'm like oh this is nice this is real nice so um <laughs> it was unbelievable the things that you will do when you are so hot but I really felt bad for the ones who did not have electricity or lights and there are some people to this day who still do not have electricity not a lot but there's some and that is ugh, that's crazy well I was talking about on Wednesday Jerry decided he was going to go to another town it's about an hour away to see if he could find a generator I'd been talking about a generator for a couple of years <laughs> but nothing is done until you know it's happening to you so he went and he found one he found one that and it showed that they had six left and he went in and when he got there there were five left so he was able to get one by the time he got home with it got it hooked up all of it took a while because he had to get some parts and things to get it to to work it had been running a couple of hours and the next thing we know here comes the electricity but the good thing is we got a generator now so I'm, I'm hoping we don't have any more but they keep telling us this is gonna be a very busy hurricane season so hopefully we're gonna be ready another thing that happened during this time everything in our little town was closed down they had no electricity they didn't have the generators you couldn't buy gas so those people who had generators if you didn't have some gas to start with or hadn't bought ahead of time you were um, out of luck there for a little bit some people drove to other towns to get gas there were some places and they said they were waiting in line like an hour to get gas me I just sat at home didn't want to use up any gas in the car because what if you had an emergency and really needed to get out so it was really pleasant yeah okay. I don't know who was, who might have been pleasant for, but I did keep my cool or my heat or whatever, and I didn't I didn't freak out <laughs> too much. <laughs> I just was just that one time I saw my husband. I told you we needed to go ahead and get a generator. Well, you should have gone ahead and ordered one. I'm like, I don't know anything about them. I don't know which one to order. Uh. But, yeah, I just told them. I said, I'm sorry. Uh, this this heat was just getting to me. It, it is what it is. And that next day is when he went out and looked for one and found it. So, like I said, we're ready for the next time. And hoping there's not going to be a next time. But, it, it, it was, yeah. All week long was rough. Trying to get everything going again my daughter who's on t-mobile she did not get phone service back steadily until saturday i'm saying i'm thinking because she tried calling me friday night and it just she sounded like she was a robot and it just kept going out so she said never mind i'll <laughs> i'll just get off yeah it was like can you hear me now can you hear me can you hear me <laughs> so yeah no I couldn't I couldn't hear her. so that was that was our fun days of the hurricane that's kind of the 
shortened version. Thankfully, we made it. As I said, we had water, so... And I also had lots of bottled water, so I always keep bottled water. Our water, it makes me sick to my stomach, so that's what I usually drink. I'll make coffee and stuff with it because it's heated up and... But otherwise, mm -mm. I mean, literally, make, and, and a lot of people have told me that it makes them feel sick. So, I don't know what's in it. I don't know if it's too much chlorine or just what. I don't want to put so much you're going to make people sick. I don't want to feel like I'm drinking in a swimming pool. But, didn't really do any crafting was no way to do it so um, I read I read a book and we were able to my daughter had bought my husband this really cool fan and the fan the, the whole base of it which is really big I don't know how many inches long it is but you charge it up, and I had charged it up for the Hurricane came, in case we lost, you know, phone power. It has lights on it and that kind of thing. So I was able to charge my phone up, no problem, using that fan. And I also turned it on when the hot, on the hardest part of the day, on like the first or second, um... It goes up to four speeds, and I put it on, like, number one or two. So I got just a teeny tiny bit of air during the very hottest part. And I think that actually saved me a, a lot. You don't think that it's that much, but it it really did help. Of course, I, I couldn't run it all the time. I knew I'd run out of steam at some point with my fan and I wanted to be able to charge my phone so yeah it, it was nice it was real nice <laughs> the dogs were giving me kind of funny looks like hey mom why is it hot in here so I'd have they come over and get a little bit on the fan they'd lay out on the tile floors because it was cooler of course so we all just did our best to survive now, where did my <laughs> ones I was working on go to? Goodness sakes. I'm still, I guess, in Hurricane Valley. <laughs> Not thinking straight. It's hard to think real great when you are hot. You're hot. The humidity in Texas is blue. Like today, it. the last time I looked, it was, I think, 90... Maybe 92 degrees, but the feel like was 105. I'm like, yay. <laughs> yay. It's because the humidity is, the, the air is so saturated. You just walk outside, you're sweating. So it's not pleasant. Oh, and when my husband got home with the generator, guess who got to help him get it out of the truck? Oh yeah, that would be me. I have no idea how much that thing weighed. Um, I had bought Jerry this wagon that will hold over a thousand pounds. Thank goodness. And he kind of pushed it off the edge of the truck. Because I had loaded it, I think, with a forklift. I'm like, this is, this is nice. Really nice. Of course, he was doing most of the work, but I tell you what. It was warm that Wednesday afternoon when he came in with it. Um, so, yeah, I was out there helping him get things put in. It, he got the wheels put on it, so then he was able to roll it around. That thing's heavy, but, yeah, you need heavy duty when you want to run some, you know, things in your house. Because you hate to have to lose your food again. And we, ha we have central heat and air, but we also have window units. And that's what we will run, or just the window units, so that it's not pulling so much 
amperage. We run the window units most of the time just to save on electric costs. And it it makes a big difference if any of of you other people out there do that. It does make a difference. So we've got one of the units in three different rooms. <laughs> of course, if they're not working, it doesn't do any good. But a generator should run them with no problem. It's not like it's running that big old unit. <clears throat> the central unit. So, We'll see how things go um, from here on out for the summer. Our hurricane season lasts into November, about November, and our peaks time is around September the 10th, so the middle of August till the middle of October is our biggest time for hurricanes. So this was odd to have it at this time of year, but you know... Things can happen anytime they want to. Uh, is there anyone out, out there listening to my voice that had to deal with this hurricane? Because it, it left Texas eventually and went to other places. And I don't know what it did after it left here. Everyone here, we were getting limbs picked up and food thrown out and that kind of thing. Jerry went to Walmart we don't have a big choice in stores. We have a very small HEB, a little, a, a, a small store called Brookshire Brothers, and then we have Walmart. And so Jerry went to Walmart to try to get a few things. And Jerry really wanted some bananas, and he said he went in there. And there was one banana left, and he said there was a little kid playing with it. I couldn't help but laugh. Just of all things. Guess they were bored. <laughs> so, so, by Sunday he went back and they had bananas. So he got his bananas. They were nice and green. <laughs> but they're, they're looking a whole lot better today. Which is Tuesday. A week later. Oh, and there was something else I wanted to talk about. That if you want to ask any questions about the hurricane, just put them down below. Or if you want to tell me your experience. If you had anything to do with Hurricane Barrel or whatever. that This was, it was crazy. Um, the One of the reasons they said that we had such a widespread electric outlet was our electric company, Chico, gets its electricity from energy. Well, the energy, some things had really got messed up on energy. So, our electric company couldn't do anything until um, energy was fixed. So, yeah, it took a lot longer than normal. The last time I remember something lasting uh, this many days, I think was Hurricane Rita. I think that would maybe might have been 2005. And my mom was still living. My dad had passed just a couple years before. And me and my brother Greg and my mom went to my brother Daryl. who He's the one who passed away four and a half years ago. We went to his house because they didn't lose electricity. So uh, there was no way. And my mom had a little canary that I'd bought her. So we took the bird with us. So any animals, they had to be taken with us. Because it is hot. But Jerry stayed. He said, oh, I'm fine. I can do it. And he did. I'm just... Oh, that man. He's tough. So anyway, there was something else I wanted to talk about. that has to do with crafting. I... Uh, as you know, I've been showing, not just doing diamond painting, but I have also been doing cross stitch. And I have had some people asking me, which one do I like the best? And the answer is, I like both. Sometimes I'll diamond paint. Other times, with my cross stitch, I can go sit on the couch. And since they are stamped cross stitch, 
I don't have to just sit there and stare and count um, all of the stitches. So I can sit very comfortably. I have a nice lap stand that I can show you that I purchased off of Etsy. It was normally $110 and I got it for $66. And the last time I looked, they still had it for $66. So it's solid wood. It's great. I also like to crochet. In fact, I did crocheting before I did any of this. And I and I used to do counter cross stitch before that. So I uh, I like to do a lot of different crafts. And I know a lot of you do too. So let me know what are some of your favorite crafts? Because I know most people now I know some people can't do other crafts because of their hands or some other physical problem. And yeah, I you know that is makes a big difference. Like I haven't started crust, uh, crocheting that my uh, my dear Isaac's little baby's boy, uh, baby blanket yet because I'm so worried about my hands. But they seem to be feeling better, so I'm gonna need to start on that. It was way too hot to crochet <laughs> during the hurricane. I, I couldn't. I, in fact, I couldn't do anything. It was too hot. I couldn't concentrate on doing any of it. So. Just let me know, uh, but just know that I like to do more than one thing, and I've decided I'm going to start showing some of those other things, um, because some of those things are things that you'll like, or something you may want to try that's something brand new. So just, you know, stick with me, you know, if, you, if, if it's not something you're interested in, just you know, you don't have to watch that one. I'd love for you to, and just to listen to me chit chat or whatever, or show you something new. Um, as far as with diamond painting, there's not a lot of things that it, it takes practice to get uh, good at putting the squares down. I mean, the squares, the drills down straight. It just takes some practice. But I'm going to tell you the best thing that I ever got. Were these, and I have this on my Amazon store, I have it linked under diamond painting, were these silicone sheets. It's a box of 200 I think I paid $20 for that. That's like two or three years ago. I still have most of that package left, and I have given several of them away. And you can move this around, put it wherever you want, and you can lay your hand on it, and you can steady your hand so that you're not, you know, shaking when you're putting your dot, your little drills down. So don't make it easier on yourself. Do things that will make it easy. And I mean, I showed this years ago. It's just easy. Do things for yourself that will make it easy to diamond paint. Um, diamond painting is is easy. It's very relaxing. And people say, I don't know how you get them so straight. It just, the more you do it, the better you get. And as as far as rounds or squares, I like either one. I, I You just get used to them. I find the squares sometimes even almost be easier because you've got a line to line your little drill up with. Because these are straight, you know, have straight edges. Just put it whichever edge you want to look at. I usually look at either the bottom or the left hand side and put it up there against that. And as you can see, I'm doing the checkerboard method. I was doing a whole lot of multi placing at one time. The thing I've noticed with other people who do that, you can tell there'll be strips. And you can tell there will be long strips here. And then you'll see like a space and you'll see some more. But they say, oh, I go back and do this. To me, it's faster for me to just do them one at a time because I enjoy it. I enjoy, I think my, one of the main reasons that I enjoy doing the checkerboard method is because 
when I go back to fill in those squares, especially with um, Bella Art Diamonds and Captured by Radiant Squares, they have a nice little pop. They fit, the squares fit very, very nicely. So, if you haven't tried one of theirs, do it. Oh, and Bella, they have a sale going on. Certain ones of their diamond paintings, you can buy one and you get the second one 50% off. Go to their Facebook page and they have a link to um, to let you know which ones they have. And it's for the whole month of July. I bought two more of their diamond paintings. It's been a few months ago. I just haven't done any unboxings lately. I've been... Life just has kind of been kind of crazy different times of the year. And I've also been showing some of my cross stitch. But I have a, a few diamond paintings that I need to show you guys. And sometimes I just like, I want to, I want to do something different. So, that's been one reason is doing something different. But I'm going to show those and because uh, uh, I love them. <laughs> I love the ones I picked out, yes. And I've just been busy trying to get some of these others done. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to work on these. Because I have another Bella one that I've started. And I may pull that one back out and work on it some more. You know how it is. You Sometimes I don't I usually never work on more than two. I, I used to only just work on one at a time. And that's normally what I do. But sometimes I'm like, oh, but I really want to try that one out. <laughs> so, it's just the way it is. Everybody should just do what they enjoy. Be happy. Be happy with the things that you're doing. And don't worry about what anyone else says or what they're doing or what they tell you. Oh, you should diamond paint like this. I'm not going to tell you how to diamond paint. That's for you to have fun with. And I I started diamond painting in 2017. So I've been doing this a long time. So sometimes, you know, you want to do a few other things. Um, back in the day, I remember there were... <clears throat> there weren't any <clears throat> diamond painting channels to start with. And then I, I was doing crochet and showing my yarn and that kind of thing before. Then I started showing my diamond paintings and I had a lot of people asking questions. It was my channel and then there was Ella kicking cancer's butt and diamond painting uh, by Donnie. And there was another one named Diamond, diamond Mama, I believe. I don't know if she still has a channel and I know Ella, I don't know what ever happened to Ella. Uh, of kicking cancer's butt. If anyone knows, let me know down below. Um, but we were the only ones out there doing it. Now, every time I turn around, it's like, okay, there's somebody else doing it. Because it is fun, and people like to share the joy of their, their um, craft, you know, their hobby. It's fun to do. But don't worry about buying every little thing out there that comes along because that's real easy to do think about it before you buy uh, oh my goodness I tell you one thing when I first started diamond painting I was buying diamond paintings all the time yeah don't do that <laughs> and try other companies don't just stick with one company try someone else you might be surprised what you find out when you try someone new you're going to find, like I have found with the squares, I love doing the ones by Capture by Radiance and Bella Art Diamonds. Bella Arts Diamond. Bella Art Diamonds. Oh my gosh. I can't even tell. Say the, uh, what I'm trying to think of. What, uh, blah, 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 blah. I can't say what I'm thinking. So. Yeah, and see how I'm just going back through and filling in that square with this method. 
it's real easy real easy I love doing the checkerboard and that's been around for years so if someone is just showing it to you yeah we've been doing this for years and years and when they first started out all we had were all we had was the um, double-sided tape you know it, it was like tape was on the canvas when you put when you put your diamond painting down it was stuck it was stuck you'd either have to get your tweezers or your fingernail and pull that baby up and reapply it now you can kind of move it around a little bit you have a little bit of move around space uh, back then uh-uh no there's none so it's gotten much easier to do and just better I think anyway I think I have talked enough to you guys and thank you for joining if you listen to this whole bunch of junk that I talked about would you put a heart down in the comment section so I know you watch the whole thing I appreciate you more than you can know and you never know when there's going to be a giveaway it could be diamond painting related, cross stitch related, or something else. I'm going to see you guys later. Don't forget, put me a heart down there. Give, tell, tell me hi, something. I'll see you guys later. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you before long. Bye.